People have been using wool for thousands of years. Probably the first thing that springs to mind when the word wool is mentioned is warmth. There are several good reasons for this. For millennia, wool was spun into yarns to make the thick, insulating fabrics that dominated the clothing market at a time before central heating in homes became widely available. And to this day, most wool produced is used for clothing, but it's also used for so much more. It's flexibility, durability, odor resistance, and flame retardant properties make it suitable for countless other purposes. Wool's eco-friendly characteristics are helping to put it in the spotlight and new applications are continually being developed for this sustainable and renewable material. Today, we're gonna to take a look at some of the many innovative and perhaps even quirky applications of wool fiber. So if you're interested in hearing about that, then grab your knitting or other crafting and settle in to find out how wool just might be able to save the world. Hi everybody and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. Happy New Year. I hope your 2022 is off to an excellent start. I'm doing well and I'm getting ready for the spring semester. Our classes start up again next week, so I've been staying busy getting my courses ready. I also wanted to make a quick announcement that I've updated my Etsy shop with some more of my D-Stash yarn. So if you're interested in getting your hands on any of that, then head over to my Etsy shop. Um, I'll put the link in the description box below this video. Okay, so today's video is another one on the topic of wool. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how wool and specifically merino wool is used in medical and other settings to improve human health and well-being. And I'll link that video down below in case you missed it and want to check it out. Um, and we all know that wool has been immensely popular as an apparel fiber. Some of its other traditional uses have been for things like blankets, rugs, tapestries, and furniture upholstery. Um, during the last century, there was a lot of investment in developing synthetic fibers with the same favorable qualities of wool. Um, these fibers are less expensive to produce, but so far no one has been able to exactly replicate all the naturally occurring qualities of wool. So more recently, wool has been subjected to intense scientific study to see how we can make use of the natural attributes of wool in technical and industrial settings while controlling its cost. So today I'm gonna to talk about some of these functional applications for wool. Keep in mind that for most of these applications, the wool being used is waste wool or the wool that's left over from processing the high quality yarns or fibers that are used in traditional applications. And it really can't be made into anything else. So it would basically be thrown into the trash. So these non-traditional applications are saving a whole lot of wool from being thrown away into landfills and are actually improving the planet. First, I'd like to talk about an important function of wool, and that is to purify indoor air. In one study, researchers investigated the ability of wool fibers to filter formaldehyde from the air. Now, formaldehyde is a common indoor pollutant that can cause irritation to the skin, eyes, nose, and throat. It's used in a multitude of household products like detergent, shampoo, nail polish, computers, plywood, insulation, paint, wallpaper glue, and insecticides. So for this study, the research team created a small closed chamber where a formaldehyde solution was dispersed with a fan through filter material. Uh, the filter materials included both wool fabric and raw wool fiber that were tested for their air filtering properties over about a three minute time frame. Now for the results, first of all, both wool fabric and wool fiber worked better at filtering formaldehyde than nothing. 
The wool fabric averaged 74% air purification and wool fiber was 69%. So yeah, the wool was pretty good at trapping the formaldehyde pollution and purifying the air in that study. Now a similar study in New Zealand compared the ability of carpets made out of different materials to filter pollutants from indoor air. They compared wool, nylon, and polyester carpet. You can see part of the results of this study in this graph. As you can see, wool was way better than both nylon and polyester carpets at absorbing not only formaldehyde from the air, but also sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, which are produced from things like gas stoves and heaters. In another part of their study, the research team tested how long it would take for wool and nylon carpet fibers to absorb different levels of formaldehyde. As you can see from this graph, wool carpet removed high levels of formaldehyde within four hours. This is the green line on the bottom. Whereas absorption was slower and less complete with the nylon carpet. Low levels of formaldehyde were reduced to near zero within 30 minutes by wool carpet, whereas even after an hour, the nylon carpet had only absorbed about 50%. In other tests over a 24-hour period, the wool carpet reduced nitrogen oxides from 300 to 5 parts per million, while nylon only reduced it to 60. The wool also absorbed all the gases substantially faster, especially in the first 30 minutes. Lastly, this study looked at the amount of absorbed gas the carpet fibers re-emitted into the air later on. The wool didn't re-emit any gases tested, but the nylon did. Similar studies by government agencies in the UK also show that large amounts of sulfur dioxide are irreversibly absorbed by wool carpet. So overall, wool carpets seem like a good choice for improving and maintaining indoor air quality. An additional decontaminating application of wool is in absorbing mercury from liquid industrial waste. Now, mercury occurs naturally in the Earth's crust, but human activities such as mining and coal combustion have led to widespread global mercury pollution. In industry, it is discharged as waste in the production of chlorine, zinc, steel, and other metals, cement, and even product recycling. Mercury is considered hazardous waste. If it's not kept in covered containers, it can evaporate into a vapor you can't see or smell. And breathing in the vapor can be harmful to a person's health. Inhaled mercury is readily absorbed into the lungs and quickly diffused into the blood and distributed to all organs of the body. So it's important to find ways to filter mercury so that it's not deposited into the air and water. And it's wool to the rescue. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has conducted numerous studies dating back to the 1970s showing that wool is effective at removing mercury from water. In one study, wool removed 90 to 95 percent of mercury contamination within 24 hours, whereas synthetic fibers like nylon removed only 20 to 50 percent of the mercury. In another study out of the UK, the researchers tested waste wool discarded from carpet manufacturing. The research team found that the wool filters again absorbed more than 90% of the mercury. This is a huge potential use for waste wool, which is available in large quantities and at very low cost. It can remove mercury from industrial waste, such as that from dental clinics, hospitals, laboratories, and industries that produce household chemicals like chlorine bleach. Now, if you think it's amazing that wool can filter out almost all the mercury from industrial waste, wait till you see what else wool can do. For the past maybe 10 years or so, companies have been using wool to help clean up major oil spills. This technology was developed in New Zealand, where they took advantage of wool's natural ability to absorb oil, yet allow water to flow through. 
There's a lot of research showing that wool is particularly effective at absorbing oil. In fact, it is capable of holding from 10 to 40 times its own weight in oil. In one test at a university in Italy, researchers found that wool absorbed the oil within one minute of contact. It was able to clean up 96% of the oil in this study, and in another study, it was 98 to 99%. In comparison, synthetic materials used in removal of oil spills showed only 42 to 92% effectiveness. Overall, wool was much better than that. The researchers also found that the same wool could be reused 10 to 15 times. Once absorbed into the wool, the oil can be extracted by simply wringing out the wool pad. Now, wool is used in oil spill cleanup in a number of different ways. In factories, it's often used as a barrier for containing spills on the floor and around machinery. It's also used to clean up non-petroleum oils in industry like used cooking oil. Wool booms can be towed through polluted areas to capture spills. And it's been used to clean up oil spills in marinas, lakes, canals, and rivers, pretty much any body of water. You know, oil spill pollution remains an important challenge worldwide due to its environmental and economic impacts. Sheep's wool is a natural, renewable, biodegradable resource that can be successfully used to remove oil on both small and large scales. The wool being used for these industrial purposes is again inexpensive waste wool that is not suitable for woolen products, and it can be used without any type of activation or pretreatment. Another interesting technical application of wool is in the geotextiles area. For one example, wool fabric is being used for germination mats. The wool acts as a buffer, minimizing evaporation so that the soil maintains an even temperature and enhances the rate of seed germination. These mats also discourage bird attacks on new plants. When used to support new grass growth, the grass blades are able to penetrate the wool mat. As the wool disintegrates, it provides nutrients to the soil that are beneficial for plant growth. Studies have shown that grass planted with wool germination mats have higher chlorophyll content, as well as more nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, so they're extremely lush and green. Plus, the wool mats resulted in a 24 to 82% greater yield. Wool germination mats have been used commercially for special applications, such as grass tennis courts, cricket pitches, river banks, and park areas. They work great for areas that require rapid tur turf growth. Wool mulch mats have also been used in horticultural applications like growing fruit trees, grapevines, and timber pines. The wool mats in these situations are a little thicker, so they inhibit light passing through and prevent weed growth. These mats promote even fruit ripening because moisture can pass through them and they reflect light as well. The wool mats generally outperform synthetic products. In a two-year study at the University of Minnesota, researchers investigated alternatives to chemical weed control options. They looked specifically at strawberry production because it's a crop directly consumed by the public, and there are very few chemical herbicides that can be safely used on strawberries. So weed control is a major limiting factor in strawberry production, and because of the issues with chemical herbicides, weeds are usually controlled using manual labor. People are out in the fields pulling weeds and hand hoeing. The problem is that it doesn't provide long-term effective weed control. Because of this, many strawberry fields are not producing enough crop to make it viable for the farmers. So in this study, the research team compared two methods of weed management using mulch mats made out of low quality sheep's wool, as well as canola plants. The wool mulch mats were woven from local sheep's wool. It was about half an inch thick fabric that was placed um, on the soil and held down with landscape spikes. 
The wool mats had slits cut through the fabric where the strawberry plugs were planted. The canola plants were a dwarf variety that were planted in between the rows of strawberries for weed control. The results of the study showed that the wool mulch was an effective barrier to weeds within the strawberry rows. Canola plants were effective in weed control to varying degrees depending on how it was cultivated. But the best weed control scenario was when the wool mulch surrounded the strawberry plants and the canola plants were cultivated in between the rows of strawberries. This combination decreased the number of weeds in the entire plot. The strawberry plants surrounded by wool also showed the most vigorous growth, whereas the canola by itself didn't really affect the growth of the strawberry plants. Another thing the researchers found about the wool mulch was that the wool held the soil temperature more constant. So overall, the results of the study demonstrated that wool landscape fabric can be very effective in controlling weeds and promoting vigorous and healthy plants, and it was good at keeping the soil temperature steady as well. Another study in Montana explored the use of wool to control erosion and improve plant establishment along highways. This was a three-year study that tested the effectiveness of three wool products, erosion control blankets, silt fences, and wool pieces added to wood-based compost. All three products were field tested along Montana highways, as well as a research facility. To establish vegetation, the research team seeded all the plots with the native perennial grass seed commonly used along highways. The primary measure of success was the amount of vegetation established after two growing seasons. Specifically, the researchers measured the percentage of ground covered by the plant's foliage in each plot after two years. Now for the results of the study, well first, the wool silt fence didn't work at all for several reasons. One was because it just wasn't strong enough. They need to figure out some cost-effective materials to blend with the wool to add durability and then try the silt fence idea again. The wool pieces added to traditional wood compost didn't really benefit plant growth either. One issue the researchers are working on is how much wool to add to the compost. They said they will be experimenting with different wool ratios in future studies. Now, the wool erosion control blankets did actually work quite well. Six types of wool erosion control blankets were tested, and all of them promoted better vegetation cover of the native grasses by the end of the second season. The most effective ones were 100% wool and a blend of wool and straw. These produced the greatest canopy cover of all. In fact, 100, the 100% wool blanket produced four times the canopy cover as plain traditional mulch, and the wool straw blend mulch produced five times the canopy cover. So the wool erosion blankets really increased the growth of the grasses that were planted. Another advantage of using low-grade wool in the erosion blankets is that it's more cost-effective than standard erosion blankets. The standard erosion blankets cost about three times more than the wool ones. The added benefit of using wool also includes the wool releasing nitrogen into the soil as it decomposes. A chemical analysis showed that the wool compost had up to 150 times more nitrogen than the standard compost. Overall, the erosion control blankets made with a blend of wool and straw were deemed the most efficient, and the researchers recommended that this type of blanket be used on especially steep slopes to control erosion. They also recommended that the wool and straw blankets be used on roadsides with poor soils because the blankets will infuse the soil with nitrogen. You know, this made me wonder how long it takes for wool to decompose. So I did a quick search into that. And I found a study out of New Zealand where the researchers actually buried wool and polyester garments and fabric samples in soil to assess how fast the different types of garments would decompose. The cloth was excavated at various intervals to check how much it had decomposed. Now, after two months, 
the wool fabrics had lost 36% of their mass. After six months, the wool had lost about 60% of its mass. And after nine months, the wool was 99% decomposed. So it took only nine months for the wool to almost completely degrade. In comparison, the polyester showed no signs of decomposing within that same nine month time frame. A second test was performed on different weights of wool fabric as well as a polyester fabric. The wool samples all lost 36% of their mass at two months. Uh, by nine months, the wool had decomposed 76 to 99% depending on how heavy it was. Again, during that time frame, the polyester didn't degrade at all. So the takeaway here is that wool fabrics do biodegrade rapidly, which is one reason why they're so environmentally friendly. A lot of synthetic materials like nylon, polyester, and acrylic are not gonna decompose at all or take a really, really, really long time. Other studies have looked at using waste wool and human hair waste as possible soil additives for agricultural crops. It's interesting that they used human hair waste because really human hair is the same chemical composition as sheep's wool. And human hair waste is generated in barbershops and salons. Um, these are usually products that end up in a landfill. So a research team from Oregon State University studied wool and human hair as nutrient sources for crops and evaluated their potential to improve soil properties. One set of experiments investigated adding wool to the soil and a second set of experiments investigated adding human hair to the soil. The research team conducted the analysis on plants growing in containers as well as plants growing in a field. Um, the plants involved were basil, peppermint, sage, and thorn apple, which are all sources of essential oils. In the container experiments, four different levels of wool and four different levels of human hair were mixed with the soil. The field experiments used only three levels of wool mixed with the soil. When the plants were harvested, the soil was analyzed for nutrients and microbes and the plants were analyzed for nutrients and essential oil production. Results of the study showed that the addition of wool or hair waste to the soil increased ammonium and nitrogen in the soil, which are both nutrients used by plants. And the plants from the wool treated plots produced more essential oils than could, that could be harvested. Overall, both sheep's wool and human hair waste were found to be excellent soil additives and nutrient sources for crops. A couple of other agricultural studies in Bulgaria basically confirmed this. In these studies, waste wool was used as a soil fertilizer for ryegrass. The researchers found that higher wool concentrations in the soil resulted in more germination of grass seed and taller grass. So studies like these are showing that wool improves the nutritional contents of soil. It takes months to decompose, so it acts as a natural, slow-release fertilizer. And as a result, waste wool is becoming big business with farmers and ranchers in the sheep industry. As of a few years ago, agricultural uses of waste wool had more than doubled the value of waste wool. Before, farmers might get five to 25 cents per pound of waste wool, but now they can get 60 cents or more per pound. So it's not only helping the crop farmers, but the livestock farmers as well. All right, another industrial use of sheep's wool is as a construction material. Builders are using wool for thermal insulation to improve energy efficiency and sustainability. Polystyrene is one of the most common materials used as thermal insulation in buildings today, and its use has been connected with serious safety, environmental, and health concerns because it's extremely flammable and produces toxic fumes. A team of researchers in Austria set out, set out to compare different insulation materials that could be used in renovation of buildings to save energy and reduce carbon dioxide emissions. They evaluated three materials, sheep's wool, polystyrene, and calcium silicate. 
These materials were used as insulation in an exterior wall refurbishment. The researchers used a specially developed computer program that simulates the heat, moisture, and air transport in building materials. They ran the simulation for a period of 10 years so they could clearly see the trends in the data regarding temperature, water content, and relative humidity in various parts of the plaster and insulation. The results of this analysis indicated that thermal insulation made from sheep's wool was just as effective as insulation made from traditional materials, and in some applications, it performed even better. Sheep's wool with a vapor barrier was found to be the optimal insulation because of wool's ability to absorb moisture and adjust air humidity. Because of that, it, it created a more pleasant indoor climate. Also, the sheep's wool produced 96% less carbon dioxide than polystyrene and was found to be the most efficient, the most energy efficient material. In sum, this study found that sheep's wool could be used as a great natural resource in the building industry for insulation. It's natural, renewable, and sustainable, and performs just as well or even better than traditional insulation materials. On a related side note, I also wanted to mention here that wool insulation is also being used in packaging insulators to keep food and pharmaceuticals cool. There's a British company called Wool Cool that uses wool as an environmentally friendly alternative to polystyrene insulated boxes. The wool liners are thinner than polystyrene insulation and they can be recycled. The company states that food chilled below 5 degrees Celsius will stay cool for at least 24 hours in one of their boxes. They also produce packaging for pharmaceutical products like vaccines and other medications that must be kept cold. Another application of waste wool in the construction industry is in stabilizing natural clay soils, which are used in manufacturing bricks. One series of studies was a collaboration between researchers at universities in Spain and the UK. The objective was to produce bricks reinforced with wool using local materials that are sustainable and non-toxic and that would improve the bricks strength. Interestingly, these bricks are manufactured without firing, which contributes to energy savings. So this is a more sustainable and healthy alternative to conventional building materials such as baked earth bricks and concrete blocks. Mechanical tests carried out showed the wool clay compound to be 37% stronger than other bricks. The research team concluded that the wool fibers improved the strength of the compressed bricks because they dried faster and were more flexible. And this reduced the formation of cracks and deformities as a result of contraction. All right, I've saved the last two uses of wool for kind of fun things. And the first one of these is music. If you've ever played the piano or enjoyed someone else playing the piano, then you've no doubt appreciated the use of felted wool in music. There are three places where felt is found in a piano. The first, and most importantly, the hammers are made of dense, hard, packed felt. When you press a key on the piano, it causes a small hammer inside the piano to hit one or more strings. And when the hammer hits a string, it vibrates and makes a sound that's tuned to a specific note. The hammers produce the tone, so their quality and condition are very important in how the piano sounds. The second wool part in a piano is the damper. The dampers keep the strings quiet when you want them to be quiet. If it weren't for the dampers, playing one note on a piano would cause the rest of the strings to ring and make a strange echo noise. When a key is played, the action lifts the damper off that one string and holds it up for as long as the key is depressed. As you play the key, the hammer launches forward to hit the string and the damper lifts at the same time to let the string actually sound. As you let go of the key, the damper drops and quiets the string again. Now dampers are made of soft and fluffy felt compared to the hard packed felt of the hammers. 
Pianos usually have two or three pedals that you work with your feet. Um, the right pedal is the most commonly used and is called the damper or sustaining pedal. It raises the dampers from all the strings when you press on it, allowing notes to continue even after you release the key. The third place where felt is found in a piano is, well, all over it. <laughs> there are small pieces of felted wool throughout the piano, cushioning parts that might hit or scrape against each other. You might think of a piano as built to create sound, but there's just as much done in the construction of a piano to prevent noise as there is to cause it. The best way to block unwanted sounds is to insulate all the parts that might rub together or rattle against one another, especially where there are moving parts that have to sit right up against each other. Take a look at a grand piano with the lid opened up. You can see felt in a lot of places, which is all to prevent unwanted rattles and vibrations. In fact, there are over 2,000 pieces of wool felt in one upright piano. Now I should say that piano felt is usually high quality wool rather than waste wool, especially for the more expensive piano brands. Okay, the last use of wool that I'm gonna talk about today is I guess kind of an industrial use, but it also involves fun. And that is the use of wool in the production of baseballs. A baseball has three main parts, the round cork and rubber core, the wound yarn in its midsection, and the cowhide covering. Now, the part that concerns us is the midsection. There are four layers of yarn that are wound around the core of a ball, and three of them are made out of wool. Everything about this yarn is extremely precise. The thickness of it, the composition of it, the length of it, and even the color of it. The first layer consists of 121 yards of four ply gray wool yarn. And this is the thickest yarn layer at over three inches deep. The second layer consists of 45 yards of three ply white wool yarn, which adds a little over a half an inch. The third layer consists of 53 yards of three ply gray wool yarn, adding another 3 16 of an inch. And the last layer is 150 yards of fine white cotton polyester finishing yarn to protect the wool yarn and hold it in place. And this adds about an eighth of an inch. Wool was selected as the primary material for the baseball's windings because of its natural resiliency. It compresses when pressure is applied, but then it quickly returns to its original shape. And this allows the baseball to retain its perfect roundness despite being hit repeatedly during a game. So there you go. We are familiar with wool utilized for fabrics, rugs, and yarns that we use for knitting, crocheting, weaving, and so forth. But as you saw today, the low quality wool scraps left over after processing can also be used in some non-traditional ways. Wool is a great insulator, fertilizer, and erosion preventer. It's being used to reinforce bricks, making them stronger and more environmentally friendly. And it's been successful in helping soak up major oil spills. You can even find it in pianos and in baseballs. So in light of all these applications, it looks like wool can at least help save the world, and maybe already is. In any event, there's no doubt that people will continue to develop new and innovative uses for this wonder fiber. Well, that brings us to the end of class today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the many unusual, quirky, and maybe less well-known uses of wool. Leave me a comment down below. What did you find the most interesting? What did you learn today? Or if you have any questions for me, let me know those as well. It's always great hearing from you. And I read every one of your comments. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And I hope you'll come back and join me again next time. Until then, stay smart and have a sparkly week.